video, uh, we're going to talk about uh, linear transformations. I'm going to show you how to prove uh, a function is a linear transformation. So first, let's define what, what that is. So we're going to let v and w, these guys are going to be vector spaces, okay, uh, over a field f. And we're going to say t, capital T, from v into w is a linear, I'll put lin, transformation, let's put tran, linear trans, if, so there's two conditions, and in the proof we'll have to just verify these two conditions, and then we're done. So if one, t of x plus y is equal to t of x plus t of y. In other words, t is an additive function, and this has to hold for all x and y and the domain v. So for all x and y in v. Two, if you take t of a scalar c times our vector x, that's equal to c times t of the vector x. And this has to hold true for all vectors x in our vector space v and for all scalar c in, in our field f. So if both of these conditions hold, then we've shown that our function t is a linear transformation. Okay? Um, so I'm going to erase this and let's actually do uh, an example of a proof. So those are our two conditions. I'm going to hopefully just memorize it. All right. So we're going to look at a special uh, linear transformation called the reflection. And so what the reflection does is it actually just reflects. So if this is the xy plane, okay, this is uh, the y-axis, okay, and this is the uh, x-axis. Uh, we take a point here. It's going to reflect it across the x-axis. So it's going to come down here. So if this point was x comma y, then this one would be x comma negative y, right? Because it reflects it across the x-axis. So we're going to look at the linear transformation that actually does this uh, to, to the vector x, y. Okay, so we're going to erase, and we'll define t, and we'll go ahead and do the proof. So here the t, so we'll proof t from, and the vector spaces here are r squared into r squared. The uh, overlying field is the real numbers. So t given by, and so what does t have to do? t has to take a vector. Now, a vector is an ordered pair, right? So it has an x and y component. So it has to take the x and the y, and it has to reflect it, right? We said that if this was x, y, then it has to reflect it, and so this will be x negative y. And so what do we do? We just send the vector x, y to the vector x negative y. Beautiful stuff. So that's, that's what we have to prove uh, is linear, or a linear transformation. So to prove this is uh, linear. So proof. Okay, so that's right, really small, <laughs> because this is a long proof. So we just basically, it's not that long, we have to show the two conditions. So we have to show, uh, let's do the additive part first. So the vectors here are ordered pairs. So we can't just say take x and y, we have to say take x1, y1, x2, y2, so it's a little bit more work. So take any, Take any, really small, x1, y1, and x2, y2 in B, and C in F. So F here is the set of real numbers. So I'll just say the set of real numbers because uh, our overlying field is the set of real numbers. Okay, so those are our two vectors. And now we have to show, if you remember the definition from before, the definition of number four said two conditions. I'll write them over here. I'm going to use vector notation this time. So t of x, put in a little arrow, plus y arrow, so that's a vector, is equal to t of x plus t of y. That's the first condition, where x and y are vectors. And then two, t of c times x, it's a vector, is equal to c times t of x vector. So here, this x vector is, is this. Right, and this y vector is this, right? So the vectors here are ordered pairs. Here they're written as there's just one symbol, right? So it's, so it's a bit different. So let's do this one first and blow it out. So this is t. Uh, so we have x plus y. These are vectors. So it's this plus this. So x1, y1, plus x2, y2. Okay. And now what do we do next? Well, there's only one way to go. This is like what's called a, a one-way proof. So we're basically going to just add up the vectors. How do you add up vectors component-wise? So this is going to be a new vector. This is t. And our new vector is just x1 plus x2. Okay? And then here it's going to be y1 plus y2. Okay? 
Okay. Now you might say, well, that doesn't look like that. Well, what you can do is you can just erase these. <laughs> That's what people do. It just, it's a notational thing. So this is really T of x, y. This is, this is just shorthand. This is shorthand for this. Right? So these extra parentheses are just, they're just there. So you could drop these if you wanted to. In fact, in this next step, I will, just, just for some clarity. So this will be x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2. So now it looks exactly like this. So our x here is x1 plus x2. Our y here is y1 plus y2. Now we use what, what t is. What is t? t is the reflection. So it takes this point in the xy plane and reflects it. So this is equal to, running out of room, t. Uh, oh, not t, sorry. It's equal to x negative y. So this is our x. This is our y. So it'll be x1 plus x2 negative y. But y is this. So it's y1 plus y2. Because this whole thing here is our y, right? Hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, then we distribute the negative 1. So this is x1 plus x2, negative y1 minus y2. Right, just distributing the negative sign. Going over here, whoops, whoops, running out of chalk. Going over here, <laughs> uh, we can break this up and add, uh, add these guys up. This is really x1, negative y1, plus x2 negative y2. Let me, let me pause here and explain that step. So that's, think about going backwards. And when you add these up, you get x1 plus x2, x1 plus x2. Ooh. Negative y1 plus negative y2. Negative y1, negative y2. Again, it's x1 plus x2, x1 plus x2. Negative y, negative y1, negative y2. Okay, this, I'm gonna come up here, be weird. It's coming up here, from here to here. This is, well, this is just the reflection, right? X negative y, it's x1 negative y1. This is t of x1, y1. That's this piece. And this is t of x2, y2. And that's it, right? Because this is this, and this is this. So we showed that t of this vector plus this vector is t of the first vector plus t of the second vector. So that shows the first conditions. So and I can erase all of this, and we can go to the next piece. So the next piece, let me try to, uh, yeah, just erase this. See if I can find some wet paper towel. You know, wet paper towel. I erase my little condition. That's condition two. Okay. So now we'll do the second part. So the second part says that t of cx is equal to c of tx. c times tx. All right, so this is very similar, so we, we can use the same variables. So as before, we'll take t of c, and we, we'll just use the first one. So this is our x vector. So times x1, y1. You basically have to show that the C factors out pretty much, right? So that's what it looks like. It looks like the C is factoring out. So you have a scalar times a vector. So you just take this scalar, which is a number, and you multiply it times each of the components. So this is T of CX1, comma, CY1. Okay. And then here, uh, you use the power of the reflection, right? So this is equal to um, CX1. And here, this is our Y, so it'll be negative c y1 okay and uh, I guess now you can pull out the c so this is c x1 skipping some steps here negative y1 because right? c times this is this c times this is this right c times x1 is this and then c times this guy is just this so and this is c times and this here is t of x1 y1 so t of x1 y1 and that shows the second condition. So we show both conditions, and it's a linear transformation. So hopefully that video wasn't too long. That's it.